I've been watching the media reaction to Trump's suggestion to Americans that we not be overly fearful about COVID-19. And it's really been amazing. I mean, I just watched them as they attacked him. He's heartless. He's stupid. He's not following the science. He's terrible. He's this, he's that. You know, he's all these bad things. Then they drag out people, you know, who had COVID-19 and they say how unfeeling he is and he doesn't understand or people who had a loved one who died of COVID-19. And, you know, this guy's just an abomination and all these horrible things. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, you know, we're in the middle of a crisis. Things are really going badly in this country. 2020 has been a pretty horrible year. I think that's probably the one thing people on the left and the right can agree on. It's been a crappy year. And he's the president. And he's supposed to be our leader. And he's trying to lead. He's trying to cheer people up, which is what you do in a crisis. You know, and, and I thought for a second, I said, wait a minute. I've seen this somewhere before. Didn't we once have a really bad crisis we were in the middle of? And don't I remember a president sort of telling us not to be fearful? And of course we did. And here it is. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. That was March 1933 at FDR's inauguration. Now, in those days, it was in March. We moved it to January. Of course, if we do mail-in balloting a lot, we may have to move it back to March to give them more time to count the ballots. Uh, that's one of the reasons they were able to move it up, because we weren't doing those things that way. But that's another video. But there he was in the middle of a depression. And what was he saying to people in the middle of the Great Depression? You know, it was like 20 million people unemployed, horrible unemployment rate. The world was going to hell. And there's Franklin Roosevelt's inauguration telling the American people the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Really? That's all we had to fear? But he's trying to lead the people. He's trying to help them out of the Depression. And it worked. Not so much because of his policies, but because of his leadership. I mean, my grandparents all went through that period. They all hated Herbert Hoover. They hated Republicans. But they adored Franklin Roosevelt. And I could tell my grandfather all I wanted. Well, really, the worst year of the Depression was 1938, which statistically is true. But he didn't give a shit. You know, the worst year of the Depression was the year before Franklin Roosevelt became president. Because once President Roosevelt took office, my grandparents had hope. Before that, they had no hope. The whole family was in turmoil. But after Roosevelt, they had hope. And that's why, to their dying days, they voted Democratic. And that's fine. But imagine if... The media at that point treated President Roosevelt the way the media treats Donald Trump today. Think of what they could say, just like what they say about Trump today. Oh, here's President Roosevelt. He's telling us we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Uh, let me, let's bring in a famous economist here, you know, Joe Blow. What do you think about that? Well, John, this is really terrible. I mean, we had 20 million people unemployed in this country. You know, people are jumping out the windows as their fortunes are lost. People are homeless. People are hobos. You know, it, it, it's a terrible situation in this country. And for him to stand up there and say, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. I mean, what a crock of bull that is. What a crock of bull. And, you know, what's he talking about? We have all these other things to fear. So, you know, unemployment, the factories are closing down, you know, blah, 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 blah. On and on and on and on and on. And they could do that. Let's bring in another expert. You know, let's bring in a family member. Uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Joe Smyden. You know, who? You're from what? Scranton, Pennsylvania? Oh, yeah, I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. It's horrible up there. You know, my, my one brother killed himself when he lost everything in the crash. All my other brothers or sisters are unemployed. They're all living with me. None of them have jobs. They're all becoming alcoholics. Uh, you know, it's, it's really terrible. And for to watch this joker up there, this clown, say that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself is what nonsense. What other nonsense? You know, he ought to come to my house and talk to my family and tell me the only thing we have to fear is fear. We have to, we have to fear getting tossed out of our house. We have to fear how we're going to pay for food next week. You know, those are my fears. 
I understand that. Let's bring in another expert, an international relations expert from Harvard University, or maybe it's Yale, or maybe he's teaches at both. Who knows? And he's going to come in here and I'll say, what do you say about what the president said? Well, it's nonsense. The only thing we have to fear of fear itself. Do you know what's going on in the world? I mean, we got fascists in Italy. We've got this Mussolini guy. You know, he just got... It looks like he's probably going to invade Ethiopia. I mean, this could be a global war. And then you got this Hitler and the Nazis just took over a couple of months ago in Germany. I mean, they have raving anti-Semites. They wanted to take over Eastern Europe. I mean, this, this is going to lead to World War II, a second world war here. And then out in the Pacific, oh, hell's breaking loose. The Japanese invaded Manchuria a couple of years ago. They're probably going to invade China soon. You know, uh, we don't know what we're going to do, and, and the whole world's a mess. And for this man to stand up there and tell the American people that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, it's total nonsense. You hear him talking about Hitler and the Nazis? You hear him talk about Benito Mussolini and the fascist? You hear him talking about the Japanese out there in the Pacific? What's, what, what planet is this guy from? What planet is this guy from? And you know what else? And I have to say this. I, I don't want to bring this up. And I, I can't I can't prove it. But I've heard from people inside uh, the transition team that the Roosevelt administration, when they come in, you know what they want to do? They want to reopen negotiations and relationships with Soviet Russia. Now, I think that the reason he's in there is because of Soviet interference. The Reds came in, they pumped money into his campaign to get Hoover out of there. And in, re in return for that, he's beholden to Moscow, to Stalin, to Joseph Stalin. Franklin Roosevelt is beholden to Joseph Stalin. And because of this money, what he's going to do is recognize the Soviet Union, which we haven't recognized now since the end of World War I. And I think that this, this, this shows the Soviet interference in our politics. And, and we've got to put a stop to this. I mean, this is just despicable. And for this man to say we only think thing we have to fear is fear itself, it's just total, utter nonsense. It makes me want to throw up, Joe, Frank, whatever the hell your name is. Yeah, that that's what you could do. But they wouldn't have done that to Franklin Roosevelt because he was a Democrat. He was a progressive. But today, they do the same things that I'm talking about here to Trump because he isn't. But, you know, compared to the crisis we're facing today, when Donald Trump says, you know, we don't need to be overly afraid of COVID-19, and compare that to the crisis that we faced in March 1933, when Franklin Roosevelt became president, I mean, the world was coming unglued. The, the international relations in the world were just in flux. We were heading toward World War II. The world economy was in the dumps. Revolution was stalking many countries around the world. We had you know, high unemployment here. And what does Roosevelt say? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. You know, between those two crises and those two presidential statements, which one looks more out of keeping with what's really going on? I would say it was a statement that Roosevelt made. And yet, as a historian, a conservative Republican historian, I would not criticize. And when I taught U.S. history, which I've done for 30 years, I do not criticize Franklin Roosevelt for making that statement. It would never occur to me because I know what Roosevelt was trying to do. He was trying to lead a demoralized people because I know my grandparents. I know how they felt. And I think Trump's doing the same thing. He knows how I feel. He knows how we all feel in this crisis. And he, he's trying to get us to move forward, just as Roosevelt was trying to get people to move forward. That's why we look back and we see Roosevelt as a great leader. But that's the measure of leadership. That's what you, that's called, it's called leading. You know, it, it, I think that most, and I say this from an academic experience, most uh, uh, progressives don't like leadership. They think in terms of administration. They think in terms of management. They don't like to lead. Leadership is bullying. Uh, when I was an academic chair, that was basically the line. If I, if I provided leadership, I was just bullying people. Uh, they, they don't like that. They, you know, the anathema, leadership is it's just a, a concept that they're totally against in academia. And I think that has extended to the professional left. They don't like leadership. Leadership scares them. 
because most of them aren't leaders. They're just not leaders. And that's why they hate Donald Trump, among other reasons. And that's why it just makes me sick watching these clowns. Trump's not the clown. The people on CNN, MSDNC, ABC, CBS, who do I leave out? I don't know. They're the clowns. Well, that's my reaction. That's my take. What's yours? Let me know in a comment. If you like, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with a friend. That really helps the channel grow. And in the meantime, stand tall, stand firm, confront the resistance, and keep fighting.